In this tutorial, we are going to be looking into pivot tables, how to create them, and also how to update data in pivot tables. What I have here in this sheet is a list of orders that each of my representatives has sold for three years, 2016, 17, and 18. And as you can see, the data is pretty extensive. So that's where the pivot table is going to come in handy. Basically, what the pivot table does, it allows you to summarize and manipulate large amounts of data in a very simple way. I have here two questions that I need to answer out of this data. I need to know how many box units has each of my representatives sold in 2017. And I also want to know what is the average price per unit sold by Larry in each year. So you see, I could in theory do this manually, but that would be a huge amount of work. So we're going to create a pivot table and we are going to answer these questions very easily. So to start, I'm going to click anywhere within my data set. So for example, here, I'm going to click on F5. I'm going to point my cursor to data. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to come down to pivot table and click on it. And the spreadsheet has created a new tab where it has added my pivot table. As you can see in Google Spreadsheets, there is a helper. The spreadsheet is telling you where the row data is going to go, where the column data is going to go, and where the values are going to go. So it's much easier having this visualization to help you. So let's start answering the first question. My first question was, how many units has each of my representatives sold in 2017? So I'm going to add the reps in the rows. I could have them in the columns as well, but I think rows is going to be easier to read. So I'm going to click on add. And what I need here is reps. So you see each of those items here is one of the titles of my sheet where I had my data. So here I'm going to add the reps and they're going to go to rows. There they are. And I can change the order. I'm happy with ascending. See if I click out of the, what I did now, I clicked out. And if I click out, the helper disappear. So if this happens, you just come back and you click on your pivot table and the editor comes back. Uh, in this case, I don't need to add any columns. I do need to add my values. So what I wanted was the box units. So I wanted to know how many box units has each of them sold in 2017. So here I'm going to add box units. And by default, the spreadsheet is giving me a sum. That's what I need. But if you click the arrow to the right, you see that there's many other um, functions that you can use. In this case, we're happy with sum, which was the default. And now, if you remember, we had three years in the original data. So this is the sum for the three years, but I only need 2017. So we're going to have to add a filter. So again, I'm going to click on add. And what I need here is order date. Now, as you see, my dates, I don't have years. I only have uh, dates. So one trick that I could use here, for example, I could uh, clear all the selections so nothing is selected. And then I type in 2017. So these are only the dates that contain 2017. Then I select all of them and I click OK. Now I have the sum. So let's just expand here so we can read it. So now we have the answer to our question. This is the number of units that each of my reps sold in 2017. Let's go ahead and look at the second question. The second question was, what is the average price per unit sold by Larry in each year? So average price per unit that Larry sold in each of the three years he has worked for me. I'm back to the original pivot table that I had created and now let's edit it. Or instead of editing, we could just create a new one. But let's go ahead and edit this one. So we need to know the average price per unit of whatever Larry has sold 
during the time he has worked for me. Okay, so one thing that I can do here, I have the wrap. And that's fine, I can add a filter with wrap, because I only want Larry, right? So I add a filter with wrap, and I remove everybody else. Click OK. Now I only have Larry. Um, now, I don't need box units anymore, so I'm going to remove that. What I need is the average cost of units that he has sold in each year. So what I could do here is add the years in the columns. But the problem is I do not have years in my original data. So what I can do, I can come back to my original pivot table. I'm going to click on region or order date. Right click. And I'm going to insert a column to the left. And I'm going to add it data sort called year. What I'm going to use here is a very simple formula function called equals year. You see the helper is showing me the function here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to click on the date. And basically what this is doing is taking the year out of the date. I'm just going to come to the bottom right and double click to drag this formula down. And we can double check a couple of values, but you can see it's always correct. This is 18, this is 17. So what I did here now, I added year to my pivot table, to my data, so I can see it on my pivot table. The cool thing in uh, Google Spreadsheets is that this gets automatically updated in the pivot table. So if I come back to my pivot table, I have to click on it to see the editor. And remember, I wanted to add years to the columns. Now if I click on add, year is already here. So I click on year and you see it has added me 2017 only. The reason it has only added 2017, remember we have a filter here for order date. So we're going to remove this filter. You see now I have the three years, 16, 17 and 18. And now we have to go to values and calculate the average of the orders. So I'm going to go add, and we wanted to know the average of the cost for each unit, for the units that we sold. So I'm going to go cost per unit, and by default, it's giving me a sum. I want an average, so I'm going to change from sum to average. And that's my result. That's the average cost per unit that Larry has sold in each year. So it looks like 2007, 2016 is when he had the highest uh, price per unit. Now, one last thing that I want to do, I don't need totals here. It's silly because I only have one data set. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to untick show totals for rows, and I'm going to untick show totals for columns as well. And that's a much clearer view answering the question that we had. If you want to follow along with the tutorial, the spreadsheet that I'm working on is available and linked below on the comment box. All you have to do is open the link, then click on File, make a copy, and save a copy to your drive. Thanks for watching.